But what do I mean by a hard problem? A hard problem is a complicated problem that can't be solved by just one solution. Something that I'm passionate about is education. In our society, people need high quality education to get a job and live a high quality life. But our education system is not teaching us all the ways of edu uh, and all the skills needed to succeed and does not use all the ways of educating a child. Our education system is a hard problem because there is not only one solution to solve the problem, but it cannot be solved in a single day or by a single solution. We have used an education system since 2076 BC, but we still haven't solved the problem with our education system. Hello, my name is Ko, and today I'll talk about how we can solve what I call hard problems. Our education I want to start with one of my favorite quotes by Albert Einstein. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Do you, our, our education system makes us think in a way that making a mistake is bad. But if you never make, if you never want to make a mistake, then you have to sacrifice your ability to try something new. Innovations and inventions happen because people try something new. Do you remember your experience at school? Did you like or enjoy school as a kid? An average kid spends around 15 years at school, but is it even worth it? Our modern education system was made in 1837 by Horace Mann. That was almost two centuries ago. Do you think that something that was made two centuries ago is still a good system? In this modern education system, a conventional method of a child learning is by first going to a school and then having the choice to go to a university. I want to introduce to you a problem solving framework that is unconventional and something school doesn't teach you. It's called MISI. MISI is an awesome framework used to solve hard problems. It helps us understand and break down the problem. MISI stands for Mutually Exclusive and collectively exhausted. This means it looks for all possible factors without them overlapping. This framework will help me find out the reason or factor behind a problem. As I mentioned, our education is a hard problem. School is part of a safe haven where kids can learn and have fun. But school is not perfect. Students get hurt and bullied sometimes. And sometimes, schools do not teach effectively, which can lead to ch children being not empowered to learn. So let's use Mises to break this problem down. First of all, let's figure out the root, root, ca root causes. There are two types of school, public and private schools. Today we will focus on public schools. Underneath school, we first have to think about the factors or concepts which means we can't use the same same factor oh we do we we have to think first think about the factors or concepts we do this until we use all fac factors which means collectively exhaustive although we use all the factors we have to be mutually exclusive which means we can't use the same thing twice for example funding and planning could be problems so we write finance under school under finance, we write funding and planning. So let's continue. Another factor is the parents. The parents are an important factor to a student's success. Involvement and the expectations of the parents will change the ability, uh, change the, uh, ch ch will change the way the kids think and their ability to learn. Another factor is accessibility. Having high quality education is important because 58.4 million kids do not get to go to school, according to UNESCO data. If those 58.4 million kids got an education, that is 58.4 million more brains that can work on solving these hard problems. Another factor is the curriculum. The fit, those are the things the kids learn and the opportunities they will get. This is important because this will shape the and impact the way the, the, the way the kids think. My last big factor is the students. 
Those are your friends, your classmates, and your peers. The, the people around you affect the way you think and learn. For example, if you surround yourself with people that do not study, you will notice that you will start to procrastinate or stop studying. On the other hand, if you so surround yourself with people that are very smart, then you will try harder to become like them. Humans don't want to become, be different and try harder to fit in because that's how humans work. Humans don't want to be different and hate being different. That's why they try harder to fit in. By using Mises, we broke the problem down and used all the possible factors. Using this information, we can see why our school might not be performing well. Now we can look at the factors uh, and look at in little individual things like funding. Public schools get funding from the government and a school might not be performing well because they don't get enough money from the government. If the problem had one solution, then we could use and just pick one of the factors, such as funding. But we are not looking at one school, but we're looking at the entire education system. This means that we have to look at each little factor, like priorities. Pri For example, for priorities, schools can prioritize what to do with their budget. We can plan what to do with their money by creating a sheet of things that makes learning a better experience. This could help schools get better by prioritizing their money and resources on better things. We just broke the problem down. Well, what do we do now? We now have to solve the problem. I want to introduce to you one of the most unconventional mindsets, moonshot thinking. What is moonshot thinking, you might ask? Moonshot thinking, also known as 10x thinking, is a way of thinking to tackle a problem. For example, do you know why we only do the things that are close to us and, and the things that we can see? And we also cannot do the things that are far in time and space? Well, we used to be fish. Fish couldn't see much in water because light doesn't travel far. So they reacted only to the things that were close to them. We humans still keep this straight and only do the things that are close to us in time or distance. This is how evolution works. You improve your body until it works and the only body that, that works stays. The problem with evolution is that you cannot restart a body so it has a better brain, but it basically improves it by 10%. This is similar to a conventional method of solving a problem. You try to improve it by 10%. But what if I told you you had to improve something by 10 times? Well, a person has to revolutionize the solution and has to restart. You have to create revolutionary change instead of evolutionary change. For example, humans had to have a faster way of travel. The current mode of transportation was horses. To improve transportation by 10%, we could breed bigger and faster horses. Well, what would you do if you had to improve something by 10 times or 10 or 10x? Well, you really can't use horses and have to restart. Humans created the revolutionary solution of cars. In our case, what can we do with school? Well, if we want to improve our education by 10x or 10 times, we have to create a brand new system and a brand new curriculum. This does not mean you keep working on a solution until uh, even if you know that it's going to fail, like in the Fairness scandal. But you, you keep working on it um, un until you use all possible solutions. Company A is a moonshot company. It has so many moonshot ideas, such as a reusable rocket. Company A tries things that seem impossible, but after so many failed landings and attempts, they finally created a, a successful landing last year. There are many hard problems and out there and almost 8 billion brains. If Company A could build a reusable rocket, then we can do anything. I believe that you can use the mindsets and the frameworks I told you today and create a brand new tomorrow. But if you fail, it's okay because anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Thank you.